Hi, I am Coach JC, and I went from $400,000 in debt, depressed, oppressed, and suicidal, throwing away my story to helping people win all day and helping people build purpose-driven lives and highly profitable personal brands. And I am one of the passionate few. Interview today with Omar was absolute fire. Man, Omar is the G of uh, podcast and interviewing. And not only that, he's a beautiful human being um, and he's a great, great, great person. So I'm honored, I'm grateful to be on this show. Man, I believe that people are going to create the winning mindset. They're gonna learn how to create a new story for their life throughout this episode. They're gonna learn how to overcome their fear story, create a faith story and win in life. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Passionate Few Podcast today. It's your host, Omar, and today we get to sit down with the founder of the Win All Day Movement, Coach JC. He's not only a speaker, author, entrepreneur, and he's not only helping people build their brands, but he's even more passionate about helping people win at life however they define it. His story is incredible because he went from being just a regular Jonathan to inventing the man he is today, none other than Coach JC. So thank you so much for encouraging the message of the Win All Day Movement, brother, and thank you so much for being on the show today. Come on, baby. Let's go. Omar, I'm super stoked. I'm excited. First of all, I just want to say thank you. Um, I'm grateful for you, who you are, the message that you share, man. Just who you are in the world, man. I love you, bro, like a brother. And, you know, I'm honored. I got to say this, bro. Like, I am up. I'm standing. I am not sitting this whole episode because I, you got to hear me, man. I am here today with the passionate few, the man, the myth, the legend himself, you. And the number one question I get in life, bro, it's Coach JC. How do you have so much energy? Why are you so passionate? Where does that come from? So I'm just super excited to be on the show with you today. And I'm honored and grateful. And I believe we have a message to share with the world that's going to change lives today, brother. Absolutely, man. And I want to go three part with you in this interview today. So number one, I want to talk about a little bit about your story, right? Your upbringing, how you came from, you know, kind of humble beginnings, that rough place growing up very young, having to be a father when you're only 20. I want to talk about that. Number two, I also want to talk about, you know, the things you've done with your books, you've helped people from weight loss to business to mindset. And of course, number three, we'll get practical about, you know, tactical pieces of advice you can give to people to win all day in their life too. So um, I just want to preface with that because I love your energy, but I want to know your story because the man you are today is incredible. You've got amazing energy, one of the best energies I've ever met from anybody. So I applaud you. You make me want to stand. Um, but take me back, man. Uh, if we look back at your story, give the audience a little bit of context of kind of beginnings you came from and some of the challenges you had to face uh, before you became this high energy guy winning all day. Yeah, no doubt, Omar. You know, here's the bottom line, man. I'm a cat that grew up in New Jersey, you know, uh, grew up raised by a single mom. And my mom raised us on great morals. She did an amazing job. Uh, it was me, my mom, my sister. We grew up extremely poor, lacked a lot from a monetary perspective. And I saw a lot of pain and suffering. Grew up at a young age, knowing that my calling in life, I, I had no idea what it meant, Omar. But I knew at a young age, when I was in a shelter, in a bunk bed, crying, weeping, looking down at my sister at the bottom bunk bed, and I just hated life at that young age. We suffered so much. We used food stamps. We visited local food pantries, took public transportation. I couldn't have the Michael Jordan sneakers. And I knew at a young age, man, that I was going to help people not be in a pain and suffering. And I had no idea what that meant at the moment, but I knew it was my calling. And the other thing I knew, and I made a, a goal of mine and I packed at that young age is I was going to be the man of the household, man. I was going to rescue my mom and my sister from that poverty stricken life. And that was my story. And I stuck by it, man. I was going to go make a lot of money so that I could rescue them and pull them out and they would never suffer again. I was gonna show my dad and pay him back, right? And so I was gonna do that one of two ways, man. I was gonna either, Jersey, you know, I was gonna either become a professional rapper or a pro athlete. And that's how, that was my ticket. The rap career didn't work out real well for me, Omar, but I used athletics to stay out of trouble, man. And basketball was my sport. I became really good at basketball. And it took me out with an opportunity to play basketball at a division one university in Tulsa, Oklahoma called Oral Roberts University, freshman year. Man, I made one mistake that radically changed my life forever. There was a cute girl on campus. All the athletes were chasing her. Guess who won? This guy. She got pregnant. <laughs> yeah. She got pregnant. And uh, man, it, it was frowned upon. They told us, hurry up and get married. We got married. We were divorced in six months. I had a daughter on the way. And uh, I wasn't able to play basketball. I threw in my basketball opportunity. Uh, my daughter, and then my, my wife my, at the time had a daughter. And uh, I ended up in a custody battle, man. Fighting my life, not only to, to be a dad, but for my life. I threw my story. I hated who I was. I was depressed down and out. And then it took me to $400,000 in debt, fighting, paying attorneys and court systems to be a dad. You know, what happens, Omar, when the story that you orchestrated for your life that you thought was going to end up doesn't end up that way? 
right? For me, it took me to a very dark place. And like you said earlier, I wasn't always Coach JC. I was this Jonathan Keneally guy, and that was my full name. But man, I had, I hated that guy at the moment, man. I was living with so much guilt, so much shame, so much condemnation. Man, I went through a divorce, threw in my story. I couldn't even look at my mom and my sister because now I couldn't rescue them. And I felt so much guilt. And I, I went through a divorce and I said, I would never do that to my kid because, you know, my dad did that to me. And so 20 years old, by myself, in Oklahoma, depressed, suicidal, down and out, $400,000 in debt. And uh, that's when I created a new story for my life. And that's what I'm blessed to help people do every single day is flip it and take that greatest test and make it their testimony. Take that most painful moment and make it their purpose in life. And that's what I did. I created a new story for my life by creating Coach JC, my man. And when you did that, I mean, how quick was it from getting the news of, okay, listen, Jonathan, you're going to be a father at 20, the shock of that. Like from that moment to you sitting down and changing the narrative, what happened in between? Because I think most people are in that in between, but it might be lasting a lot longer than it should, right? Or than it could, yeah. right? And, it, and they become almost jailed by that instead of counseled by that or inspired by that because you took your pain, turned it into power. But talk to me about, you know, what happened from the moment you found out, boom, you're having a daughter. I don't know if she told you or what it was to, oh my God, what am I going to do with my life to, you know, when you made the switch, what was that process like? Take me back just so the audience can get context of where you were at in your story at the time and understand, you know, not just you from, from now, from the positive spin, but in the moment, what were some of the negative emotions that were holding you back, anchoring you down, fears that popped up? What was that like yeah. for you? Yeah, man. At that moment, man, I was really bound by fear, worry, doubt, uncertainty, you know, the guilt, the shame. And oh, Omar, I got to tell you, like, you know, my, my story was to play basketball and that's what drove me, right? And we all have a story that drives us. But what happens when that doesn't end up the way that needs to end up? You have to find another driver, right? right. So what happened for me is my daughter's then taken from me uh, and, and my fight rather than rescue my mom and my sister became I'm going to fight to be a dad. And here was my mindset, man. I was never, ever going to be a deadbeat dad. I was never going to be like my dad was to us and leave my family and abandon my family. So it did not matter, man. You could ask the people that were in my life at that time. Like I was on a mission that I was going to be a dad. So when I was told you can't be a dad and you're not going to see your daughter, man, that was my fight. And that was my motivator. It was my why. It was my juice. It was my driver. And, and I'll never forget, Omar, at that time, you know, I had, I was down and out. I was depressed. I was suicidal. And it wasn't like it was just a switch right away. It was like me trying to figure it out. It's like when the weight of the world's on your shoulders, right? And you're like, man, I have no idea what to do. Like, this is way bigger than I ever dreamed. Imagine, I can't handle this on my own. Man, and I had a friend of mine who was telling me, like, yo, you're going to kill yourself. Like, you're really in bad shape. You got to go to a Bible school. And I'm like, that's the last thing I want to do. I just want to lay in my house. I want to feel sorry for myself. I don't know. And he forced me, like propelled me to go to this Bible school. I'm showing up to this Bible school and listen to me, bro. I don't remember most of the stuff that was said because I was so down and out, so consumed with my situation, my problem. But I remember one class and I remember one professor, like it was yesterday. And this professor stood up in class and he read this one verse and it said, it was Romans 12 too. It said, do not be conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then he said this, you can create your life. You can change anything in your life once you learn how to renew your mind. So I started to research, like, what does that mean? I don't really understand all that. I just thought you got to work hard and grind and put all the work in as an athlete. And I started to study how the mindset works. And I started to realize if you want a different action, every action originates with the thought that you've got to renew this mind thing. And I started to renew my mind. I started to great, create a new belief system. And then I started to create a new story by saying, okay, I got to break ties with this old Jonathan Keneally. I hate him, right? He, this, this guy's guilt, shame, condemnation, suicidal, depressed. But who would I be if I was to be who God called me to be, who he created me to be? And I created Coach JC, this avatar, the physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, relationship-wise, what I would look like as a dad. And I created a vivid picture of what that would be. And I cut ties with the Jonathan Keneally and I walked into this Coach JC guy. Wow, dude. And how did you keep the motivation hot to make that shift? Because, you know, it seems to me like most people would probably like you don't seem like the type of guy who wakes up in the morning at 4am and goes, oh, I don't really want to wake up. It seems to me like you've got the fire on. Is that is that not true? Do you still fight it? Or like, do you find the momentum is just so strong that now you enjoy getting up at 4am? Have you found a way to kind of enjoy that process? Or do you enjoy the overcoming of the mental battle to be consistent in the gym to be consistent in your fitness to be consistent in your mindset to be consistent in your you know, whatever it is? You know, how, how did you keep that motivation hot? Yeah, Omar, it's a great question. I mean, here, here's the bottom line is like, 
I made a decision at that moment that feelings cannot dictate and determine what I did. Mm-hmm. Right. So if, if feelings wouldn't dictate and determine what I did, I would never fought to be a dad. I would have been, I would kill myself. I was suicidal. So you've got to hear what I'm saying right now. If there's somebody listening, like you got to know what it is you want, create a compelling vision for your life. The vision for my life was this guy, this is what I want. You know how many people listening right now, they don't know really what they want. There's not a compelling vision. All right. So mm-hmm. we, we play the surface level game, right? right? The word, the Bible, the average says, write the vision and make it plain so you can run with it. So mm-hmm. I don't care how I feel. I don't negotiate with how I feel, right? If you don't know what you want, you'll never get it. So I created, what does a winning life look like to me? What does me as a dad look like? And I started to create such like this purpose-driven, passion-filled life of me being a dad. I said, here's where you're at. Here's where you want to be, right? But I got clarity around the result that I desired. There was no wavering. So, and I'm still that way, Omar. So my point is saying that, like people ask me all the time, where's the energy come from? Like, hear me right now. Energy comes from passion, right? So at that moment in time, I had to find something to bring passion back. Where's passion come from? Passion comes from purpose, right? Person, purpose breeds passion. So if you don't have purpose, you're never going to have passion and energy about something. You're never have, you're not going to, you're not going to have that strong conviction. So my new purpose became, you have got to fight to be a dad. You're going to overcome this to be a dad. And that became my purpose. And you had it. So, so think about this for a second. I had to stop seeing what the natural, what, what I've seen the natural, right? This is powerful. Right. Right. If I kept seeing all I was seeing the natural, Omar, I was seeing depressed, oppressed, judges tell me no, attorneys tell me no, you're not going to be a dad. So I asked the person right now on the other side that's listening today, the same question I asked myself. And it's not what I was seeing in the natural. I asked myself, what do you see when your eyes are closed, Coach JC? What do you see you as a dad? What do you see you out of $400,000 a day? What do you see you create a new story? Guys, you, what's most powerful in life is the vision that you see when your eyes are closed, not when they are open. And you got to create wow. a compelling, like who said it? Helen Keller said it this way. What's the worst than being born blind is having sight with no vision. So I had to create a vision beyond what I could see in the natural at the moment. And most people get stuck, Omar, because all they can see is what of the debt, the kind of this, I lack, my marriage sucks, I can't have the business, my bank account's showing up. you got to create a compelling vision beyond what you can see in the natural if you want to win. And that's what drove me. I was 100% convicted, and I had a strong, compelling vision that I was going to go to custody of my daughter and be a dad. 100%, man. I love that. That's perfectly said, too. Perfectly said. All right. Now, in terms of some of the obstacles you had to overcome, man, it's pretty wild to think that you came from that situation to then, I believe you opened up for President Trump or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. I've been blessed to do some amazing things, man. With my story, it's opened up some doors. You know, I was asked to open up for President Trump when he was campaigning in front of 12,000 people in Little Rock, Arkansas. And, you know, I've been blessed and honored to coach people and speak on some of the largest stages. And I'm just humbled and grateful. You know, I think we all have a story, Omar. You have a story, I have a story. And you know, once I started sharing my story and built my personal brand around my story, doors opened up because I understood this, that you overcome by, t- by sharing your story. And when I shared my story, not only did it make me better, but man, there's a lot of lives that were changed. And, 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 and that's the most important thing, you know? Dude, that's so powerful. For you, though, what were some of the most surreal things that happened? Because then I can relate, and I totally agree with you, that we move towards the image we hold in our mind. But I love how articulate and well put that is about that matters more about what you see with your eyes closed versus, you know, having eyes but no vision. That's that's such a powerful way to put it. So thank you for sharing that. But talk to me about what were some of the other surreal moments that maybe a couple of years ago would have been surreal to you? Because I can relate to that. I can relate to the fact, you know, being invited by Tony Robbins to go down to Florida. The fact that he would even know my name or acknowledge my existence would have been, you know, mind blowing to me years ago. He changed my life in so many ways. Um, and there's countless experiences I've had, you know, throughout the show and my journey. But uh, I know for me, I can relate to you in that I wrote that stuff down and made a grand plan for my life, still am. And when things became real, I was like, whoa, that totally wasn't luck. That was totally intentionality that made that happen, even though my, my thinking at the time, right, like you said, seeing in the natural wouldn't have allowed me to see. I had to see in the supernatural to have a supernatural. Power. Uh, and, and that's such a powerful way. So for you, what were things that like you ended up doing or experiences you've had that tripped you out? You never would have thought maybe it's writing a book. Maybe it's, you know, opening for the president. I mean, just to share with the audience a specific tangible thing that you turned from an idea into reality. Yeah, man, that's a great question, Omar. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is, and the, and the coolest thing is like the school that I went out from New Jersey to play basketball at, that I threw away my story 
man, this is just amazing, bro. Like God's such a God of restoration. Like, think about this at 23 years old, bro. I'm going to fight in my life to be a dad. I threw away my story to play basketball at that same university. I became employed by them as the youngest director of strength and conditioning in the entire nation at the division one level before I even graduated. Like, bro, talk about a story of redemption and turnaround. So to me, that was like the coolest thing. Like, talk about surreal. And then from that, I wrote my first book out of desperation. I started my first company bootcamp Tulsa. I had no money, bro. And I was like, I got to make money to fight to be that. I got to pay an attorney. And I got this idea. We used to train as lifeguards on the beach in New Jersey. And I was like, man, what if I train people out at the parks in Tulsa? I had no money to open a facility or do anything cool. So I started training women outdoors at the local parks and grew it to eight locations. And then women paying me more than any gym membership. And I had 400 women pay me and all the gym owners. And they're like, how is this guy doing? What's boot camp? And I started the first ever women's only fitness boot camp in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which grew to seven locations. But, you know, I think so many of the greatest things we ever do come from desperate times. And then I went on to open, uh, I went on to open for the president but also speak on some large stages. And I started a dynamic sports development, which is one of the top facilities for athletes. They come all over the nation to train, to become great athletes. People that you watch in the NFL, Major League Baseball, you know, NBA, they train with us in Tulsa. And that's been a huge blessing to me. And now I have coaches that run that facility and I'm doing things in a, in a different level, but bro, like that's humbling to me. So a yeah. lot of cool, a lot of cool things can from, come from your story, you know? That's super cool. Yeah. And how long was it from when you, you know, kind of went into a negative place after finding out about your daughter to making that shift. And I know I'm like harping on the point, but it's because I really want to zoom into the fact that like you said, it was pretty quick that you went into like overdrive mode. What, what was the lag time in between? Are we talking weeks, months? Was it gradual? What was that? What was that shift like for you? Just was, because a lot of people are in that shift, you know? Yeah. So I really want to zoom in to speak yeah. to them. It's a great question, Omar. And, and, and it's, it definitely wasn't overnight. Like, here's the deal. I believe in miracles. I believe in breakthroughs, like, but you mentioned Tony Robbins earlier, right? So let's, let's go there. Like I'm going through this horrible time. I'm learning how to renew my mind. Romans 12, two, I told you earlier, don't be conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I'm overcoming the things of the world, guilt, shame, condemnation, all that stuff. I start to transform my mindset. And then I read this in a book, the meaning of anything in life only has the meaning you choose to get it. Tony Robbins. Yes. So yes. I read this quote. So I, so I flipped the script by giving my story a new meaning, the perspective. Like that's the thing that changed everything. How you choose to see it. Like the only thing Omar keeping the person right now listening from getting what they really want. If you're listening right now and you desire something in life and you want to be more, you want to achieve more. The only thing keeping you from getting what you really want is the story that you keep telling yourself of why you can't have it. So you got to stop making up stories to excuse the result. That's what I did. Change your story, change your life. You're only going to get a new life, a new result by taking a new action. We talked about that earlier. You have to take a new action, but only take that new action. You have to create a new belief that it's possible. Like, I, like think about this, Omar. The greatest belief you could ever have is a belief in God, a creator. The second greatest belief you could ever have is a belief in you, who you were born to be, why you were put on this earth. Like, think about it for a second. You have something listening right now that me and Omar don't have, that no one else in the entire world has, and that's you. Like, like think about that. So if you can create, if you can bring back a belief in who you were born to be, who you are, and who you can become, and you can create a new story, a new meaning around whatever your situation looks like, the meaning that I gave it is I started to tell myself all this thing that looked really bad, I said it had to happen. People would come up to me and say, I'm so sorry. What's going on, JC? Oh my gosh. No, no, don't feel sorry for me. I have to go through this. This had to happen for me to become who God called me to become. And once I started to change my belief, my life started to change. You see, it's not who you think. It's not who you think you are that holds you back. You were the saying before, but it's who you think you're not that's hold, that holds you back. So mm -hmm. your story gives you belief, right? Your belief has the power to create. So right now, like Omar, I can't tell you my story changed overnight. But what I can tell you is everything that happened from that moment on, I assigned it a new meaning. 
I, my perspective was the thing that was shifting everything. And that created a new belief in my life that absolutely changed the trajectory of my life. hundred percent. How did, how did you, how did you crystallize that story? Did you write it down over and over? Or did you just emotionally intensely associate to it? Did you meditate on it? How did you ingrain that inside? Because a lot of people may have that, but they don't hold on to it or they fizzle out of the momentum. How do you keep the momentum and how did you lock it in? What advice do you have for people who may ask that? Bro, it's so simple. Like, here's the bottom line. You either, are, you're going to make a decision. Am I going to operate with a fear story or a fate story? It's as simple as that. Most people operate with a fear story on a, on a daily basis. In business, in life, and whatever it is, you've got to flip the script and start to create a fate story. And here's how you build a fate story. Here's exactly what I did. Two steps, bro. Number one, see it. You've got to see it better than it is at the moment. I started to tell myself, Coach JC, you're not moved by what you see in the natural. I walk by faith, not by sight. And today, today, if you're listening to this podcast, you've got to, my challenges. You've got to create a vision beyond the current moment. You've got to stop being stuck by what you just see in the natural. So what I start to do, Omar, and the person listening to do right now is I designed it, my life, okay, as it was going to be, not as it was. I started to see something that no one else was seeing. Judges were telling me, yo, you can't. Attorneys were telling me, no, you can't. It looked impossible. You threw every story. And I didn't accept that. I started to see beyond the current moment. I started to create a compelling vision, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And every single day, it's like repetitions in the gym. I saw it different. And but that was the first step. The second step was I started to say it. So what I was seeing when my eyes were closed, not what I was seeing in the natural, right? That's where most people get it twisted. When my eyes were closed, I was seeing this compelling vision and this new coach AC. And then I started to speak it. I started to say it, right? Faith comes by hearing. Like if you're listening right now, me and Omar might be great coaches. You might listen to Tony Robbins. You might listen to preachers. You might listen, listen to me. You've got to become the greatest coach in your life. You've got to become the greatest teacher, the greatest peach preacher, the greatest salesman in your life today. Oh, like you got to make a decision that you're going to sell yourself on starting to believe in you again. Like this thing right here, Omar, the tongue, what comes out of your mouth can absolutely steer your life. If every single day you tell yourself you're a loser, I can't. So many people have been conditioned to create no environments. It's not possible. I can't have it. And most, like when I'm coaching people, I have them log that for a week. I want you to log every thought and I want you to log everything that comes out of your mouth. You should see the direction of people's lives from what they speak. So if you want to change you, your story, you've got to do two things. You got to see it different on a daily basis, right? You can you got to stop seeing what you see in natural and you got to say it. You got to start to speak it. You got to sell yourself, right? And it's three power statements. I can, I will, I must. It didn't matter how I felt at the moment. I started to fight my battles. That's how I fought my battles. I can, I will, I must. Oh, the attorney told you you can't have it. Oh, you're never going to have that job. You're foreign. No, no, I can get out of debt. Oh, no, I will be the youngest strength coach in the nation. No, I must be a dad. And it didn't matter what was thrown at me. I saw what I was chosen. I saw what no one else could see. And I spoke different than my current situation. I called those things that were not as if they were. Does that make sense, brother? <sighs> Dude, I'm fired up, man. man I'm <laughs> you got me ready. You got me ready to take over the world, dude. It I'm works. On fire, bro. Hey, real, real quick. I want to continue, but where can people say they're fired up and and they're like going to watch this interview on a two part? Where can people find out more about you, just so they if they want to take action, they're hyped. They're like, man, I want to find out more from JC. Where can people find you? Social media. I know you got books out. Where can people find you? Yeah, Omar. So CoachJC.com. Um, that's my website. But also, right now, we're doing that super cool. In the in helping people build highly uh, profitable personal brands that are purpose driven, you know that's the win all day personal brand uh, dot com. That's super cool. Uh, but coachjc.com, you can find anything I'm doing from there or social media at the Coach JC on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter, any of those platforms. Man. Awesome, man. We'll put links in the description below so people could check that out. Man, I'm fired up, man. If I was watching this, I'd be like, man, I want to follow you. So I just want to speak to the audience. It's going to be hyped on that. Come on, now, baby. talk to me about. Talk to me about your day-to-day -day rituals. Uh, are you somebody who believes in, you know, early bedtimes, early to rise? Do you kind of have your own schedule? Are you constantly evolving things, auditioning things? What helps you stay primed every day to stay in this peak state? Yeah, absolutely, Omar. That's a great question. Like, I don't, I don't choose to negotiate, like, with, like, who I am and who I was called to be, right? So mm -hmm. I know who I was called to be. I know the mission I'm on. I don't negotiate with it. Like, I'm just releasing this playbook, bro. 
This is not hot off the press. I'm going to send you one, but it's called the Win All Day Playbook, your game plan to how to live with passion on purpose so you win in life. This is a 90-day game plan, exactly what I do, bro. Like, it's my personal development plan, and I honestly believe, like, I'm not a big guy that you have to always do the same exact morning routine, and you always have to, like, I don't believe in that as much, but I do believe in having habits that become habitual routines that set you up to win. So I have strategic winning actions that I do every single day, like focus breathing, like my meditation time, my prayer time. I absolutely create my day every night. I have my to-do list. I have my big three. I know exactly before I go into the day what my day is going to look like. So I create my day. You know, Tony Robbins, you talked about him earlier. After that quote changed my life, I started to read all this stuff and I learned about peak state and all that. And I was like, whoa, this is kind of cool. But real talk, that changed my life. Because I started to put myself in a peak state every morning. And then emotions didn't dictate and determine what I did. It didn't matter what somebody told me. It didn't matter what I believed because I already was in control of my emotions. I, I, so every single day I do things to become emotionally resilient. And I wrote, I wrote an ebook on that too. You can get it at coachjc.com forward slash um, win, winning, um, win the day or winning hour. Absolutely free. It's a free. You go down. What's, what's the link again so people can check it out? It's coachjc.com forward slash winning hour. And it's a free ebook, but it walks you through 60 minutes of my day on how I set myself up to win. It's personal development, bro. That's what changed my life, developing me. And that's the thing. That's why I'm so big. Like, I'm so like power, like purpose driven on helping other people build personal brands. A personal brand is not just a business. A personal brand is you, who you are, what you stand for, what you're about. So like what we do is we build a human being parallel to the business. And that's why like, no one does what we do. So we can get somebody to say, okay, what's your purpose? What's your passion? Let's get you in the seven key areas of life. We get them winning in. And then we take that purpose and passion and we build a business around it. And then we teach them how to coach, build a course and do all those cool things. So now they have a purpose driven life in a business. See, most people build a business and then their life sucks. That's not what I'm about. <laughs> Like that, so so, so that's true. so passionate yeah. about what I do. You're the brand, and if you're the MVP, you're the most valuable player. If you learn how to build you, man, you can have anything you want in the entire world. Wow, what's been the most challenging thing for you to develop? We know a lot of your strengths. What are some of the things that you've struggled to kind of get good at, or that gave you an extra challenging time? Just to relate to people who might be listening and go, "Well, man, weight loss is really hard for me." Which I know, for example, your weight loss success book. I love it. Been reading that, but you know. I'm sure you've helped people from all walks of life. I'm sure you've helped dozens and dozens of people with all sorts of issues. So you can relate. Um, what are some of the things for you that were particularly challenging and you had to mentally really overcome them that maybe um, most people would be surprised to know? Yeah, Omar, that's a great question. Like there was a time in my life where I was fighting to be a dad and I needed money really, really bad. And I looked at people online, like a Ty Lopez. I looked at these guys that were making money online. I was such a slave working for somebody. I was working 14 hour days. I didn't have the freedom to go see my daughter. And I was on a mission to create that. And I'm not a real techie guy, but yeah. I was like, I'm going to figure out what these guys are doing. I saved, I saved money, like putting a piggy bank away, bro. And I went and studied and learned Ty Lopez and flew out and met him and learned what he did. Billy Jean's marketing, learn what he did. I started to understand and join click funnels. I went and found out what these guys are doing to create time freedom and financial freedom by moving businesses online because I needed to have that so I could have the freedom to go be a dad and raise my daughter when I got full custody. And that was my story. And I went and did that for eight months. You can ask my wife now, who was my girlfriend at the time. I, I invested money, click funnels and coaching Russell Brunson is not cheap. Ty Lopez isn't cheap. And I put money that I didn't have, took a crazy risk. And for eight months, because I had that sense of urgency and had money on the table that I did not have that I committed to, I learned how to do digital marketing, bro. I learned how to run Facebook ads, how to run Google ads, how to run YouTube ads. I learned that. I had no idea what I was doing. I was a fitness guy. I was personal development. I'm a motivator. I'm a professional speaker. But I was not willing to put my future in anybody else's hands. I wasn't going to hire some guy I didn't know. So I went and learned it for eight months and mastered it. And I could be honest with you. It was a struggle. It was hard. I'm not like a G at that. But I learned that I became great at it, great enough to be able to go make money online, great enough to get my message to the world, and then build a team that now I have a team that does it for me. And I trained them how to do digital marketing so that I could just create the personal brands and break the copy, what I'm really great at. 
pick up the stationery and then I hand it to them and they do all that tactical work. So that was really hard for me, really, really uncomfortable for me. I struggled with it because it's not my strong suit, but I was so driven that I had to do it because it was the vehicle. See, and that's where people get twisted. Like just because you have a purpose-driven, passion-filled brand doesn't mean you have to love everything you do on a daily basis to make it happen. Like I had to do that for eight months. I didn't like any moment of it, but I was on a mission and that's what allowed me now to do what I'm great at. Does that make sense? Yeah, total. And when it comes to people finding their their purpose, right? Finding their purpose, which then fuels the passion, fuels the whole engine. Um, one thing I always tell people, because I get asked all the time, right? As a creator of the passion few, everyone's trying to ask me, you know, Omar, how do I find my thing? How do I find my thing? A lot of people, like you said, man, have wonderful businesses, make a ton of money, but they're not fulfilled. Tony Robbins talks about it. Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Um, what advice do you have for people who are trying to find their purpose, trying to find their passion? You know, for me, I tell people, try things, try things fast, go find things that inspire you, find your pains, go explore the, the emotional depths, the things available to you. And kind of like a match, you know, you rub up against something, you'll find something that lights your, your soul on fire, right? Or it could be a rock bottom situation where you got no choice, which for me, that, that was the case. I know for you similarly, but uh, I find that there needs to be that spark. How do you, how do you recommend and maybe from your experience coaching people at top tier levels, you know? I know CEOs, athletes, elite people you, you, you coached and you work with, like you've seen common denominators, you know, common patterns. How do the people that end up finding that purpose, that passion, sticking with it, um, you know, what do they do differently from people who, you know, other people who just kind of are always trying to find something, but never get quite committed to it. You know, they're kind of jumping from one thing to the next or the, it fizzles out. What's the difference? What's, how, yeah, yeah. you know, what are the, what, you, you get what I'm saying? What's the difference and what advice do you have for people to find their thing? Yeah, hundred percent. Great question, man. So from, from a tactical perspective, like think of it like this, I always tell people like, what's your story? Like, what, what did you go through? It doesn't mean it had to be a mess, right? It could be successful stuff. It could be great things. The mess, the success, the great, the bad, write your story down. If you're listening right now from the beginning to the end, like I just wrote my story down. And then I asked myself, whatever I overcame, like whatever I went through, or whatever I became great at, what were the skill sets that I had to develop in order to make that happen? Then I said, okay, what was the knowledge I had to acquire to make that those skill sets happen in order to overcome that? So if you look at your entire story over your life, I look at from when I was a kid, what did I have to do when, when, when I was the man in the household to overcome when we didn't have that? What skill sets did I have to adopt? What knowledge I have to acquire? Then I took it to the next season of my life when I was going through that custody battle to the next season of my life. So my whole encouragement for people is write your story down on paper or type it up and then go through your story in a timeline and say, okay, what's all, everything I've been through, okay, everything I accomplished, what's every skill set that I've adopted and what's all the knowledge I acquired? And then just take those three things and just start to put them together and say, what if through that story, if I adopted that skill set and I did, did I enjoy that? Wow, that's amazing. That's something unique. That's something different. That's wow. Okay. And then just start piecing it together and then it just clicks and you're like, whoa, I can teach other people through my knowledge and my wisdom and my life experiences and my story how to overcome because what I did was that and I developed those skill sets to do that. So that's the that's the number one thing how I gear people and steer people to do that. But here's what I know, like Omar, the 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 the, the number one thing is you gotta have you gotta have certainty in life. Like there's a lot of entrepreneurs and there's there's a lot of business owners and there's a lot of people that they're not winning in life because they don't have certainty. They have lack of belief, right? If you want purpose, the greatest like the greatest power to, in life is having purpose. Like a life on purpose, living a life on purpose. How like how do you find that? Like you said earlier, just start trying stuff. That's great, but you got to start to believe. Like you got to start to make what's in front of you stronger than what's behind you. You got to start focusing on what you don't have, your weaknesses, what you can't be. You got to start to make what's inside of you bigger than what's out inside of you. You got to start to make what's like greater, like, like whatever you want, the desire, the goal, the dream, you got to make that bigger and greater and more powerful than your greatest excuse at the moment. So I always ask people like, you've got to have a reason of why you're going to create purpose. And if you don't have a reason of why you're creating purpose and you don't have belief then it's very hard to succeed at anything in life, right? But for me, like you, I just started trying stuff and I kept trying stuff. And I was just like the yes guy. I was going to try this. I was going to try that. That's why I did digital marketing. Then I did entrepreneurship and I was in fitness and I was in strength conditioning and I was in marketing and branding until I found something that hits for me, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to get out there and dabble hundred percent. Makes sense. And then in t what about in terms of the idea where you said that you like needed to make money right away for lawyers and stuff like that? 
and you said that you were figuring out like, dang, I need, you know, significant amounts of money, not just a little bit of money to get by, but I need money to really protect myself, fight for what I want. Um, I feel like, and, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I feel like because you were in such a pinched place, you were thinking at a different vibration where you're thinking bigger level because you have to, you know, kind of like in a weird way. Uh, you know, I've done interviews with people that told me early on in their career, they would lease cars they couldn't afford to pressure them to have to afford it. Does that make sense? Pressures you to have to figure it out or at least an apartment that's a little too this, not to, not to be, you know, boasty or flashy, but to just to, for the identity shift. Oh, because if I'm driving a nicer car now, I got to level up, you know, in your situation, it was a situation where you had to level up, not necessarily by choice. Um, but did you find that to be the case that because you got real with yourself and because you were, you know, at a place where you had to figure it out, your brain thought of ideas that otherwise you may not have access, you know, you may not have pushed it far enough early on when you said, you know, you couldn't afford a place to work people out. And so you did it at the park. Maybe if you didn't have the pressure of the kid and having to afford it, you wouldn't have thought like that or what I said, oh, I'll just do one-on-one -on -one training or oh, I'll give up that idea. But because you were like, no, I have to, you're like, all right, park. Okay, screw it. I'll try it. Right. That kind of thing. Right. Was that kind of what was going on for you? A hundred percent, Omar. I mean, a hundred percent. Like number one, I was starting this thing at the park that was unknown, never heard of. It was new desperate do or die back against the wall situation. Then I started flipping homes in real estate, had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I saw a course in the library, but again, I was making money. Then right. I paid, like I had, I did not have the money. I paid James Malinchek, big money speaker. It was like $24,000 for the year. I didn't have the money. It was such a leap of faith, but I was going, he doesn't teach you how to speak. He teaches you how to make speaking a business. Right. And somebody was like, man, you speak really good, man. You could become a professional speaker. I'm like, what? They pay you for that? So I, I talk about leap of faith and doing things. For me, it wasn't buying a car or leasing a car. It was to acquire the knowledge I needed to create time freedom and financial freedom so I could fight to be a dad and do life on my terms. And I yeah. did that by figuring out James Mountain checks the best at it. I'm going to invest $24,000. I'm going to fly to LA. Bro, I can't tell you how many times I flew to LA and I'm like, oh my God, my car's, the, the card's never going to go through. It's going to get to <laughs> kick, kick me out of the group. It was every month for 12 months. Yeah. Then he showed me how to get paid to speak. And I, and I, and I spoke and made $25 off my first speaking engagement. Then I made 5,000. I'm like, oh my gosh, that forced me and pushed me to put the work in. Same with the digital marketing, Ty Lopez, Russell Brunson. I was back against the wall. Again, it was like a $30,000 investment. I didn't have the money, but I was like, do or die. I got to get that money back because I have to pay them. It's my word. So yes, it made me and forced me my back against the wall, but mine was way different. Uh, it was more of, I had to find the skill sets and the knowledge so that I could never be tied down and I could relocate. I can move. I got to fight to be a dad and create time and financial freedom. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. And I'm so proud of you for you doing know, that. More, here's what I'll say, man. Like the number one thing as we're talking about that, that came to me is like, here's what I know, man, like for purpose and everything I teach and what we're talking about now and you and me, like you are like listening right now, whatever you've been through, the past mistakes, the failures the trial, the storm, like me and Omar, you are a product of your past, right? But my encouragement is you cannot become a prisoner of it. Like that's the number one thing. I'm telling you, Omar, I had to cut ties with my old identity. And what I mean by that is the poverty thinking, the fixed mindset, the losing mindset. I had to start to believe I could make money. I had to start to believe, like if you're listening right now, like God designed you, like you were created for a purpose. You are like here on purpose. You got to get to an understanding or you will never believe and find purpose until you believe that you were placed on this earth for a reason, that you were destined to do something great, that you're unique, that you're different, that like when you come to that realization, that's when you truly are going to believe that you have purpose behind something. And the way I did that, Omar, is, you know, the old saying, like and the I am statement, right? Anything that you take and put after the I am statement is what you bring life to. So I started to tell myself, right, who I was going to be. Like your present situation is created by you. Like your future is determined by you. It's determined by what you tell yourself. It's determined by the belief in you. So I started to tell myself that I am a winner, that I am here on purpose, that I have a purpose, that I will win. Like I, I, I am fearless. I am passionate. I started to tell my, those, myself those things even when I wasn't so that I could train my subconscious mind to believe it. I didn't think I had purpose. My story was over. So if you're struggling right now with that, you've got to cut ties with the past you and you've got to create and know that you were put on this earth for a reason and use the I am statement every single day. Like I told you earlier, start to speak it, start to tell yourself that you are wealthy, that you are a winner, that you can overcome, that you can do all things. Like 
If you start to speak to yourself like that, I'm telling you, you're going to change your subconscious mind and start to take action and go win. Absolutely, man. I love that you mentioned cut off the past. Talk to me about how important relationships were, because I'm sure I know for me, I've had to have it or I've had to cut off relationships uh, because of that, man. So can you talk a little bit about um, your experience in cutting off relationships, friendships, energy, how important that is, or if you even believe in that, you know, it's protecting your energy. I know everybody has a different opinion on it, uh, but I know that's also so important because uh, I heard something one time and said environment is more important than conditioning, right? You can condition yourself all day long, but if you're in an environment of negativity or in an unhealthy relationship or just whatever it is, and you're living in that, inevitably that environment can creep in um, and you're always going to be fighting as opposed to having an environment and behavior that supports you to win. Um, so can you shed a little bit of light uh, on that, how important it is to protect your environment, who you surround yourself with, and maybe some of the things you had to do to change your inner circle? Yeah, Omar, it's absolutely everything, man. For, for me at that time, and if you're listening right now, like I could honestly tell you that wherever you're at in life, whatever you're believing, whatever you're desiring, like you might not be the problem. Your environment might be the problem or your lack of environment. So for me personally, right, I found where I wanted to become better in, where I wanted to become great in. And then I took myself and put myself in those environments, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, I removed myself from the environments that I know were toxic. And it doesn't mean that they were abusive. It just means they didn't believe I could get full custody. They didn't believe that I could be out of debt. They were thinking too small. They were stuck at the $50,000 a year mark as a strength and conditioning coach, $38,000. That was nothing for me when I'm in $400,000 in debt to fight baby dad. <laughs> well, I had to get around people that were making a hundred thousand and I had to think bigger. I had to get around people that were successful as dads so I could learn how to be a dad when I got full custody of my daughter. I went through a divorce 21 years old. I had to get around men that were health, have healthy marriages so I could learn how to have healthy marriages. I got myself in a gym around people that were physically fit so what i'm telling you right now omar that was a game changer for me i rolled in a bible school where i was hearing positivity i even told family members like don't call me if you want to talk about the problem and all the only people i would get around is people that had solutions and i started to become a solutionist i only got around people that would have solutions and when people got around me and they want to talk negative they want to talk about what we couldn't have what, what wasn't possible i just said whoa, whoa, whoa tell me what you're doing to win what are you doing in your life to win and I would just cut them off because I could not allow any of that to take me away from my calling and my mission. So my challenge right now to the person, listen, Omar, is that could be the one thing holding them back right now. Wherever area of your life that you want to be more and achieve more in, you've got to find the environment where that is like a mastermind. That's where me and you met, Bejo's right. mastermind. I put myself in masterminds where people were elevating my thinking, making me dream bigger, think bigger. So my point in saying that, Omar, it was a huge part. My environment was a huge part and I was a protector of it. And I think so many people, they're scared of rejection. They're scared to hurt people's feelings. I'm not saying you can't walk in love. I continue to walk in love, compassion, empathy, but I loved them from a distance. I love them with boundaries. I told them what I stood for and what I wasn't going to stand for. And if you're not willing to do that, it's going to be very hard to win in life. So you got to check your environment hundred percent. You heard it said before, you'll become like the five people you hang around the most. How profound is that and how true is that? I mean, it's, yeah. it's so real. Totally. How about being alone? Did it, did it force you to be alone initially when you made that shift because you had to kind of push a lot of people away because you didn't necessarily build that positive environment? Or did you, how did you find people? Because I think a lot of people listening, especially during COVID, you know, when we're recording this, are going, well, how am I going to get around people now, right? I'm home all day. Maybe I'm in a relationship that's, you know, maybe subpar or I'm on my way out of it, right? The other person might not know yet. Uh, yeah. Or maybe you, you're at home with your family or just maybe you're at home with yourself. You got your own place and you're kind of feeling lost. I mean, did you find yourself, you know, I guess it's a two part question. Number one, when you made that mental shift, protecting your energy, did you find yourself alone a lot? Uh, and how did you deal with that? And, and number two, how did you get around better people? And how do you recommend people get around better people, especially during COVID, where they might, you know, their thinking may be limited in terms of like, ah, oh, I could never, you know, I can't raise my environment now, but there's always a way, right? Yeah, uh, so no shed, shed light on that, both, yeah, both no of those? Doubt, and, you know, so first part is, yes, I did find myself alone. And here's the revelation that most people listen might not understand. For me, I needed that alone time at the moment. Mm -hmm. Like, here's what I know. Isolation could become the devil. But I needed for me at the alone time to get into these things, to study how to renew my mind, to study how to fight a custody battle on my own. I had to, how to build my personal brand, how to build my purpose driven life. I had to, this was my alone time because these were my mentors, right? TG Jakes, 
Tony Robbins. Those were my mentors. I didn't meet him yet. I didn't know him yet. So how did I get him? CDs, books, YouTube. So that alone time for me, bro, was powerful. And I'm talking four or five hours a day of me in there and then writing those things on my wall and then reading quotes and meditating on it and repeating it. So for me, the alone time was a driving force in me becoming and flipping the script and creating that Coach JC. But too much alone time can become the devil, especially for somebody like me that was suicidal and depressed. I had to force myself. And you hear what I'm saying? I had to force myself to put myself in the environments because I didn't feel like it at the moment. I was scared of rejection. I was in fear. And I was so consumed with my situation that I couldn't really have relationships. I didn't want to talk and have fun and, and, and be around people because I always think about it as the next fight to be a dad. So I had to force myself to be in those environments. And Omar, here's what I tell somebody. It's not that hard. If you're willing and you're able and you're ready and you want to find environments, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's YouTube. You can connect with anybody at any level. Now, and you know this better than not anybody, bro. <laughs> you think about the guests that you've had on your show. It's right. not that hard. If you want it and you have the desire to do it, you can get yourself in any circle and you're probably one or two levels away from actually touching whoever you want at any time and getting an inner circle. You got to want it. And sometimes like me, I had to force myself to put myself in those circles. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 Okay. I got to ask you this. What about as it relates to fitness? Early on, I had my team uh, write a bunch of questions as we've all I had my team kind of rotate through your books. We've actually been doing it for the team. Every month we have a, a book of the month that we go over. So we picked yours. Um, and this one's related to fitness, especially during a situation with COVID. I know you've written about a lot of things and help a lot of people with many things. Uh, but as it relates to weight loss and fitness, um, a lot of people don't realize, myself included, um, you know, especially early on, the, the direct correlation between your physical being and your mental being, right? Like I think the expression goes, your mind can never be sharper than your body uh, and, and vice versa, right? The, the body mind integration. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what are the common denominators that you see people who are consistent with their fitness and what advice do you have for people who maybe want to lose weight, get fit mindset wise, what shift needs to happen to really make it last? Um, because I know I've struggled with this uh, and a lot of people have written into the show struggling with this. Yeah. Uh, I think it's so important, especially during COVID. So can you shed light on how important fitness is and maybe what people who are struggling can do to really finally lock in the identity of being a fit person and adopting some of your principles? Yeah, Omar, it's a great question. Here's what I'd say. Three parts. Look, feel, and perform. Right? There's got to be a motivator for why you say, I'm going to go out and do something uncomfortable. Because in the beginning, fitness is uncomfortable. So I always look and I find, is it look, feel, or perform? Right? Do I want to look better? Do I want to feel better? Do I want to perform better? Maybe it's all three. Maybe it's two. But here's what I know. Looking better directly affects your self-esteem, directly affects your confidence, your self-belief. So when you look in the mirror as a man or a woman, but especially as a man and you're sloppy and you're fat, you don't feel good, right? And you don't look good. You start to have that dialogue with yourself to say, wow, look at you. Remember when you were an athlete and you start to beat you? Here's why this is important, bro. Like your self-esteem is how you view you, right? And your self-esteem directly affects your self-image. Self-image is how I believe the world views me. So if I look in the mirror and I don't love what I see because my body's not taken care of, I have a low self-esteem. I take on that identity. And then that self-esteem directly affects my self-image. I show up to the world different. I don't show up on fire, the best version of me. Why? I'm scared of rejection. Man, they're going to think I'm that the same thing I think of myself. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that's the motivator, right? So a direct benefit of working out and exercising, yes, is self-esteem when you look better you feel better but also there's a direct correlation between the physical and the mental you can't change that it's science and the greatest anti-depression medication in the world if you ask the real great therapist psychiatrists and psychologists they're going to tell you go exercise get moving because they know that there's hormones that are connected and it's the greatest anti-depression medication in the world when you work out the mental conditioning the resilience you build, but also the hormones that are directly affected, that endorphins are released and all of a sudden you start to think different. So maybe it's look different. Maybe it's feel different. Maybe you're out there and you're dealing with aches and pains and you don't feel good and you have back. Like you could work out and start to exercise and lose weight and feel better and alleviate pain that you weren't supposed to live with. Or maybe it's perform better, right? And what we're the world we're living right now, like there's so many people underachieving because they don't have energy. Like there's so many people underachieving because, and they're not walking out their purpose because they're tired. They have fatigue. They, they're like, think about that. So like, are you willing to 
not feel look and perform your best and not fulfill your purpose. So there's a lot of direct correlations with working out and exercise. For me, Omar, at that time in my life, it was like a healthy detox. It was like my therapy to go to the gym and get stressed out rather than me taking my life or killing somebody. So number one, exercise is absolutely crucially important. Everybody that comes to me to coach, like it doesn't matter if they're building a personal brand and they're already making $50,000 a month and they want to win more in that area. I'm still going to work on their relationships. I'm still going to work on their body because I know, I know there's seven key areas to win for a human being to absolutely maximize their God-given talent and purpose on this earth. The greatest advice I could give anybody right now is like, just get started. Like yeah. if you wait to feel 100% to work out, you'll never work out. <laughs> and, and just right. start doing it. And you don't have to feel like it, but just do it. And you know what? Eventually you'll start to feel better. The greatest way to be motivated is get a result. So when you get a result and you're like, whoa, I feel better. I'm looking better, man. I'm performing better. You're going to then want to do more of it. Right. So I would just say like, get started. And, and I think so many people get confused because they think I have to go to a gym. I have to have like fancy, put your sneakers on and go for a walk, do push-ups, do sit-ups, do old calisthenics. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you do, to be honest with you, man. People ask me all the time, what's the greatest way to work out? And here's what I tell them. Whatever you'll do and do consistently over and over. Just do yeah. something. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Otherwise, they get into their head and they start thinking. And like the saying goes, you know, the more you think, the less you do. And the less you do, the more you think. And so it becomes the cycle of thinking and never doing, thinking and never doing. You know, it's funny you say that. I just want to harp on a point. You know, I've gotten to interview billionaires across multiple industries from around the world. And I will tell you, beyond fail, they, they are almost, they're not necessarily smarter it's almost like they're more um, willing to take action in spite of the fear than they are fearless. Does that make sense? Meaning like at one point, Jeff Bezos, and we're talking about this with my team, you know, at one point, I think Jeff Bezos was one of the most broke people on the planet because Amazon was in debt billions. So he had to risk being the most in debt person in the world and carry that mental weight and be resilient with that to then later become the wealthiest person in the history of mankind. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's interesting how that, that duality almost has to exist. And like you can't have one without the other. Right. That that balance uh, and being able to like like you said, you know, it's like the fitness thing, you know, you and there's a beautiful example parallel here with um, I don't know if you've heard of it with the caterpillar and the butterfly. You know, when the cater the process of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly, it goes into cocoon and in the cocoon, it's wiggling. And in the process of wiggling, trying to get out of the cocoon, it's building muscle. And some caterpillars wiggle in the cocoon and ultimately stop because they get suffocated by that and die and suffocate. And the parallel here is in life, right? We're in the cocoons of our life. Yep. Whereas the other ones that turn into butterflies were caterpillars under the same pressure of the cocoon in the same darkness of the cocoon, no way out, but kept wiggling under pressure. And wouldn't you know that the exact muscle required to keep wiggling and break out of the shell, that muscle is built in the process of wiggling and that muscle is the exact amount of muscle needed to support the butterfly's wings to fly once it does break through. huge man Isn't that crazy it's huge it's huge and i know more think about this like it's crazy. You asked me, yeah you asked me earlier like you know what's the routines i do on a daily basis again mm -hmm. this comes down to i have a fitness routine and it's non-negotiable like and that's what that's what i think the encouragement for the person on the side like think about that for a second like this is how i talk to myself jc i didn't ask you what you're gonna do I tell you, I didn't ask you what's possible. Like when I think it's impossible and it's scary or it's weird or even fitness, like working out, I don't feel like it, you, you're going to make it happen. Or I didn't ask what's possible. There's always a way. I told you what you're going to do. So just go do it. Put your sneakers on, get it done. So I think you have to start to become a little unreasonable in your life if you want to win. Like even in fitness, like you have to become unreasonable in your fitness. You have to become unrealistic in your marriage. You got to start to create life on your terms. You got to make your wife, the, your life the way that you see it. And here's the way, like your breakthrough that you're believing for or your miracle that you're believing for, it's on the other side of your action. Like so many people, they're just waiting or they're asking, God, change this. I want this to change. I want to make more money. I want to look better. I want to lose weight. You know what? Those things are like, they're waiting for you to take the action. Things will change when you change. So my, like, my whole thing is I just get super unrealistic. And in the morning, what I say I'm going to do, I do. And fitness is part of it. So here's what I'm going to do. Seven days a week. It's non-negotiable. And sometimes it doesn't happen the exact time, but it happens. And when you do stuff like that, it absolutely, Omar, trickles to other areas of your life. 
And that's the one thing I like about fitness is you're forced to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. You're forced to push through and fight through. You build resilience. You go through the sucky moments. And all of a sudden, you start to understand this is just practice for the real world. Now you start to be better on sales calls the next day. You start to be better in your marriage. Why? Because you went through that hard thing that most people aren't willing to go through on a daily basis. And sometimes for a lot of people, fitness and their workouts are the only hard thing that they really do on a daily basis. Everything else is <laughs> We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. And if they never, and if they never do that, that, then nothing in their life is hard. So they're just, they just atrophy with time. Absolutely, man. Wow. I never, I never heard it put so well, man. Where did you learn to speak like this? <laughs> like what? Like this, like as good as you do, like you're so well-spoken, high energy. Was that cultivated or was it like little by little? How did, how did you grow that dude? That's not natural. That's supernatural. Bro. I think it's supernatural. I think it's a gift of mine. I absolutely, um, you know, I can tell you I've practiced over and over and over again. Like mm -hmm. when I know I told you I was turning speaking into a business, like I went out and spoke for free over a hundred times, Omar, in order, in order to fill up my local fitness boot camp because I had to make money. So my point in saying that is I had a lot of practice back in the day before I ever got a paid speaking engagement. Just when I would speak in front of three women at a Rotary's club just to get them to sign up <laughs> for the fitness boot camp. So I love it was it, just a lot of practice. I love it. And then it's conviction, bro. Like, honestly, I honestly believe, like, I honestly believe that most people don't believe in them. And that's the thing holding them back, right? We mm -hmm. said it earlier, but the greatest belief you could have is a belief in God. The second greatest belief is a belief in you, who you were born to be, who you are, and who you can become. Like, when you have a belief in you, like, I, this is how I operate, Omar. I believe there's somebody on the other side right now that they're going to hear something I say. And I have a responsibility to them that I've got to deliver. This might be a life-saving message for somebody through this podcast today. So like I have personal conviction, I have a responsibility and that's how I live my life. That's how I show up in every environment. It doesn't matter if it's the gas station, if it's in Walmart, I believe if I cross paths with you, you're going to start winning. Your life will never be the same because you cross paths with me. And that's just how I operate. Dude, I love it. All right. Before we wrap up, I got to ask you this, JC, how can people not only lock into the identity of, of who they want to become to really master their life? but how can they stay accountable to it, right? Because it's one thing to get committed. It's one thing to get fired up. It's one thing to go, all right, I'm going to listen to this JC interview. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to make a decision. It's another thing to follow through over a sustained period of time. How do you stay consistent? Obviously, you're human. Um, but how, you know, what, what helps you with your accountability day to day? Is it, is it being in an energy space? Is it identity, right? Like just you, you're like, man, I'm JC. I, you know, I created the win all day movement. So I have to be in a winning space. I mean, what is it for you that locks you into this identity or keeps that muscle strong just so people could model that maybe in their life to figure out not only how to get started in the right direction, but how to, how to, how to stay locked into that identity. How do you, how do you keep your identity strong? How do you, how do you prime that every day? Yeah, Omar, it's a great question. I remind myself exactly like what we talked about earlier, like every single day, I remind myself and I have it in my phone. I have it in the playbook of who I am, who I'm going to become that day, how I'm going to show up to the world. And like I told you, I do not negotiate with that. That's called self-accountability. And then I have people in my life that I share that with them. Very, very few people. All right. There's two people particularly that know exactly that routine, what I do and how I'm going to show up. So I ask myself every single day, three focused questions after my focus breathing folks focus question. Number one is tell me JC focus on one thing right now. You're super grateful for once I'm done with that. I then move on to church. JC focus on one thing right now that you will accomplish today in your life. And then I go to this third question, focus right now on one on how you're going to show up to the world today. So I already created how I'm going to show up in the world today. And I make it very descriptive and very specific off of my way, my personal brand. I created my core values. I have something. The Bible has 10 commandments. So back in the day when I was going through, I was going through, I created 10 commandments for my life. I said, man, if God did that, it must work. That's cool. Let me create 10 commandments <laughs> for my life. I have 10 commandments for my life that are posted in my gym, that are posted in my phone, that I read every day to remind me of who I am, what I stand for, what I'm about. Every single day, I create the winning mindset. I remind myself who I was born to be, how I'm going to show up. Every single day, I remind myself of my purpose. How my, I'm crystal clear on what I'm going to accomplish, the vision for my life. I go through my vision board and say, this is what you're going to do financially, contribution-wise, impact, all these areas, right? And, and, then, and then I create that ridiculous, compelling vision. Every day, I remind myself of the meaning that I'm going to assign to my day. I build that faith story every day. 
Like, are you hearing what I'm saying? The see it and say it every day. I have the action steps to make it the way I see it so that emotions no longer dictate and determine what I do. And I do that through habits and, 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 and routines so that again, it doesn't matter how I feel, Omar. Like you're going to show up on purpose each and every day. And, I mean, you're going to show up every single day, right? So either show up on purpose or show up with no purpose. Every single day that I choose to show up with no purpose and no passion, man, to me, it's a losing day. To me, it's like, man, you wasted a day? Like, are you willing to live with that, Coach JC? And so, so I can't live with that. Every single day I'm going to go in, winning's built on winning. Like I got to win the day. Like, and, and, but again, it's, it's, it's routine every single day, setting myself up to win. It's a playbook. Like how many teams and successful businesses have blueprints, have game plans, have playbooks. You don't go into a game without a playbook. The coaches call the play. You don't go into business without a playbook, marketing, sales. All. Why do we not have a playbook for our life? Our personal brand, how we choose to live our life. Oh, you're the MVP, Omar, I'm MVP. So all I did is I said, okay, if everybody has successful playbooks, that are in the NBA and successful teams and organizations, the billionaires, I'm going to have a playbook for my life. I'm going to build my own playbook and I'm going to do life on my terms. And I think most people, they don't. So what happens? Whatever happens to them on a daily basis, that's what happens. So self-accountability, number one, Omar, you better have a blueprint and a game plan to hold yourself accountable do what you say you're going to do so you can win. And then have a couple people in your life that you tell them, you know what, if I'm not living up to that, you call me on it. Like you can check me. Anytime, if you see I'm off on my game plan, if I'm talking different, I'm off, if I'm acting different, I'm showing up different, you check me. That's what a brotherhood is about. That's like iron sharpens iron. So I'd ask the person listening right now, who in your life right now is telling you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear? I have two people in my life that I know I love them and they love me enough that I, I'm not willing to tell them what they want to hear. They might have other people in their life that want to stroke their ego, but when JC's, I say, well, hold up, my man. Why are you talking like that? Why does your business look like that? Why is your revenue dropping? Why did your wife not show up tonight? Like, it's serious. Like, you're going to check me. So self-accountability and the people in your life, iron sharpens iron. Two-way accountability, brother. Wow. What are the 10 uh, commandments you have for yourself? If you have just real quick, if you could fly through some, if they're personal, I totally understand. But anything you could share with the audience, any level oh, of specificity? Yeah. Yeah, they're, 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 they're long. I'll just give you a quick overview of them. But basically, all I did is, you know how people have core values for their life, and they have company-like tenants. Like, I looked at Starbucks, Bucks, I looked at all these successful brands, and I'm like, wait, why do all these successful brands have, like, core values? Why don't I have core values for my life? And I just went off of the Ten Commandments because I was in Bible school. So, what I did is I took Ten Commandments, and they're just rules I live by. And number one is um, I treat every single person with respect and love. Like I, I tell myself every single day, JC, you're an encourager. Everyone that you cross paths with is important. Like I, the J JC, it doesn't matter what's going on. You're never too busy for someone and you're always willing to help somebody else win. Everybody, doesn't matter if it's the bum, the homeless person, doesn't matter if it's the CEO, everyone is worth something. So I operate and I choose to operate every single day with respect and love, with empathy and compassion. And I only believe the best in people, right? So have a number one, the commandment number one, treat everyone with respect and love. Commandment number two, I have a morning routine that sets me up to win, period. I invest in personal development and it's non-negotiable. The 10 commandment number three is I take ownership of my health, right? So I wake up when I say I'm gonna wake up, I go to bed when I say I'm going to go to bed. I drink alcohol if I drink alcohol when I say I am. I have my cheat meals when I say I am. I do the things I say I'm going to do with my nutrition. I have seven days a week. You're right. So two reward meals a day or excuse me, a week is all I get. And that's the bottom line. I only drink caffeine, you know, in the morning. So that's like a habit for my health. Then I get on to responsibility. Like number four habit is and my 10 commandments is I'm responsible for my life. Like, Omar, you don't control my life. It doesn't matter what you think of me. It doesn't matter what was said about me. It doesn't matter what I've done, my past mistakes, my failures. I'm never going to play victim. I'm the boss of my life. I'm the CEO of my life. I take full responsibility. I don't complain. There's no problems in my life. There's only solutions. I dictate and determine what happens to me and how I respond, right? Commandment number five is I create the energy. So you talk about that earlier. Like, I show up. No matter what, it's a 10 commandment of mine. That means I live by it. It's not if I feel like it. So I show up with positive, high energy. I choose to have fun. Every person I talk to or meet is going to feel the energy, right? They're going to feel the hope. I'm going to transfer it to them. I'm going to have compassion. I'm going to be passionate. I'm going to be relentless. I'm going to be intense. Like that's habit. That's, that's commandment number five. It's non-negotiable. 
right? And then, and then I win when others win. If Omar, if you're not winning, you're a friend of mine, then I'm losing. So I win when others win. I live to serve God. I live to serve people. So my purpose each day is to empower other people to be their best. If you're winning, I'm winning. So I live to give. Have a, uh, commandment number seven is I stack wins by making decisions. I used to be an indecisive person. Not any longer. I take action. So every single day, I remind myself throughout the day when I look at the 10 habits, 10 commandments, all right, make a decision. What decision you need to make? Level up. What's it going to be? Create. Okay, cool. Even if it's the wrong decision, indecisiveness will really cripple a human being. So that became a commandment of mine. Uh, commandment number eight is I only speak life. We talked about that earlier. I choose only uplifting, positive, destiny-shaping words to speak about my life, about other people. You're never going to hear me talk about it. I'm very careful to choose the conversations I have about myself or with other people. I don't talk about negative stuff. I don't talk about what I can't be, who I'm not. I don't enter into arguments. I don't slander. I don't gossip. I don't have time for that bull crap, right? I'm not, I don't talk about all that. I only speak life. That's a commandment of mine. Commandment number nine is I choose gratitude, right? Which is a hard one for a lot of people. But for me, it's just to be grateful for the small things every single day, to be grateful for life, man, to be grateful for what I have, right? And then commandment number uh, 10 is, you know, I give my, myself permission. I don't need validation from anyone else in life. I don't need to seek approval from every, anybody, no influencer online, nobody dictates and determines. I choose to raise the standard in my life each day. I don't wait on permission from anyone else. I set the standard in my life. No one else does. I put myself in environments where the standards are high. I don't, so, so again, those are just a quick overview of 10 commandments. Yeah. They're core values that I live by and I stand for. But again, I live by them because every single day I read them, every single day I run through them multiple times a day and I check myself and then two guys in my life know what they are. Wow. When do you, when do you sleep? I know you mentioned in one of your commandments that you say you're, when you say you're going to sleep, when you say you're going to wake up, you honor your word. Do you have a time you're on? Or are you always switching it up or what's your practical time right now that you're going to sleep, uh, waking up? So I am always, it's, it's between 9.30 a.m., 9.30 p.m. and uh, 10 p.m. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's like hundred percent. My routine, my routine in the evening is the same. Okay. I have my 30 minutes. I do what I do when I, I go over my, win the day, set myself up to win for the next day. And then I'm in bed, me and my wife sleeping by 9.30 or 10. And then I get up three days a week. I get up at 4.10. Okay. And then three, that's three days a week. Another three days a week. I get up at 5 a.m. And then there's one day a week that I get up at about 6, 15. And that's on Sunday. Mm. Well, what about days where you don't feel like it? Or you don't even think like that? Your feelings don't matter. You're, you're automated at this point. You're a machine at this point. Doesn't matter, bro. Unless I am like, <laughs> unless I am like down and out sick and can't get out of bed. And I'm dealing with something crazy. I, I ask my wife, like sometimes she's like, just sleep in. Even on vacation, bro. I am up and I do my routine in the morning. I set myself up to win. Even on vacation. I've been doing the same routine now for nine years bro relentlessly and, every single day and so that's and so that's more compelling to you you mentioned earlier than the excuses and because a lot of people for example and, and i found this too because in certain areas i'm like that in other areas i'm not i'll be honest but i find that like sometimes the hard work is more fun than laying in bed all day right like it, it i'd almost get anxiety in bed all day right or you kind of go nuts but on the flip side and i want to ask this and you're actually the perfect person to ask this how do you balance that? Because I know for me and a lot of people out there, even people who are winning, um, uh, like, how do you have fun in the discipline, right? Because it's one thing like, okay, let's say I become this perfect discipline machine. Well, where's the adventure? Where's the spontaneity? Where's the fulfillment? So how do you find joy within the discipline, right? How do you create moments where you get to pig out and eat Cheetos on the couch, so to speak, you know, not literally, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, look forward, they work hard in life, times are tough, you know, you got stuff going on. And so you want to come home and just chill or, you know, whatever it is. Um, so how do you find a sense of enjoyment, sense of adventure, sense of excitement? If you have so many disciplines going on, so to speak, I know you enjoy the disciplines, but you kind of get where I'm coming from just yes. so that people listening can see that it's actually enjoyable. It's not this like miserable, like I'm so disciplined, but like, I don't get to have any fun. So how, how do you find fun within the discipline? Yeah, it's you. I mean, first of all, the discipline's fun to me, right? Mm -hmm. So that's fun. I've got to find balance so that the other areas of my life don't suffer. That's the difference for me. So I have fun in the discipline. Like I really do enjoy the grind. I enjoy the, the like creating and the content and you know, in the morning, the personal development time, like I create, I love that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm disciplined to do it because I really do enjoy it. And I know there's people on the other side that their lives are gonna be changed through me. So that's a very big burden I take on a responsibility. 
The flip side of it is I created my life, bro. So I have the days where I'm done at 3 p.m. Like, think about that. And, and when, it, when it's time to turn it off, unless it's an emergency, I turn it off and that's time for my mom or that's time for my wife or that's time for my sister or that's time for friends, right? It's time for church, whatever it is, right? So I schedule those times. There's times where me and my wife travel and we go on a vacation that's shut everything off and let's go on vacation. And those times we travel and we're working remotely from Florida. It's not vacation. It's working for two weeks, but we know, hey, we're only working two, three, four hours a day. And then the rest, we're going to the beach, having fun, going out for dinner, but it's still working. So there's a balance behind it. And here's my suggestion for it, right? I, I communicate that with the people in your life. Like my wife knows like my time to create my time to create. So there's not on it. There's not this like false expectation, but also she also knows when it's her time, it's her time. So I don't pick my phone up when it's date night. When I say we're going to do what we're going to do, I schedule that in. Same thing with my reward meals. I schedule my reward meals in. So again, I do what I say I'm going to do. So if I know I'm not having my reward meal until th- th- Saturday evening, I don't have it till Saturday evening. So I can continue to be a person that does what I say I'm going to do. So when I say I'm going to shut my phone off and we're going to be movie night, me and my wife, I do that. And there's no guilt. There's no shame. And that's fun in the moment. So I think so many times, own the moment. Whatever you're doing in the moment, own it. And for me, it works because I created each moment of my life and I schedule the fun moments of productivity and the grind. I schedule the relationship moments. I schedule the church moments. I schedule those moments. So be strategic and schedule those just like you schedule the grind. If not, you'll get burnt out and everybody in your in your life will hate you. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I got to ask this before we wrap up. When it comes to the two powerful elements, I noticed that part of your identity, it's almost like you believe not in the finite identity, but you believe almost in like a divine identity of who you are as a person, right? The divine JC. So I want to ask how important is you and spirituality as it relates to you? How important is divinity, spirituality, God? How important has that concept been in your life? And also, uh, what advice do you have for people who are looking for a significant other to help support them? So it's a twofold question, but I know they're both very important supports in your life, you know, God and your significant other. What advice do you have for people about the role uh, that an excellent partner could have in your life? And also, what role has spirituality, God, faith uh, played in your, your life? Yeah, first of all, a partner can make or break you, bro. I honestly believe that. Your intimate partner if they don't support you, if they're not your greatest fan, your greatest cheerleader, if you can't have fun with them, if you can't live in the moment, I mean, that can absolutely break it for an entrepreneur. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs that that's the thing holding them back is their significant other. And, how, and like, there's so much things we can get in now how to create that because a lot of times there's jealousy issues. There's not, I don't get enough time with them. So to marry the right person, to have a significant other that's the right person is absolutely crucially important. And I also believe that you can condition and train that by open communication so that person understands the kind of person you are. My wife going into this knew I'm an entrepreneur. That means I don't work normal hours. She knew I was in the fight of my life to be a dad, that she was second to me fighting to get my daughter. Like that was very clear. I was like, you still want to be with me? Man, you must be a good woman because you're like third right now because I got to create money to fight to be a dad. And she was like, ride or die, I'm with you. So my point is saying that that's a make or break, bro. Like that's- How'd you guys meet out of curiosity? How'd you guys meet? We actually met at the gym where I was doing my internship at in my last year of college. She was at the gym working out. She kept showing up for like two a day workouts, bro. And all the other trainers are like, that girl keeps showing up every, every shift you're here. What's going on? And then one day I was working in like a gym that's like, you know, uh, it's for cardio, like car- cardiac patients as well. And you right. do blood pressure and all the tests. And she comes up and she says, can you take my blood pressure? And I was like, girl, you just got off the elliptical. Your blood pressure is going to be high. And she, she threw this line at me. She said, of course, it's going to be high because you're taking it. I was like, come on, girl. You don't <laughs> like that. <me." laughs> so she, she stopped me a little at the gym, man. And wow. when they together. But, you know, wow. to answer your other question, man. Like, you almost attracted her in a certain context. Did you write her down? And do you, like, do you believe you kind of manifested her? Or what, how did you that came to be? Not at all, man. Not at all. Like, I was 100% laser focused on being a dad. And she came into my life and she was like, I was like, Hey, I'm not interested. Like we could be friends. And like this went on for a year. And then we dated after that for six years because my focus was being a dad and bro, I was try- like, hear me here. Like my daughter was in Minnesota. I'm in Oklahoma. That's a 12 hour drive. Every other weekend I was leaving at 5am Omar. I was wow. driving from 5am 
up to Minnesota 12 hours, picking my daughter up at 5 p.m., hanging out with her till Sunday at 1 p.m., and then driving back 12 hours at, from 1 p.m., okay, getting back in the morning at 1 a.m., and then I had to be up to be a strength coach at 4 a.m. So, like, my whole life was I'm fighting to be a dad. Like, it, she, I was at the law library studying that stuff. So, for her, she, 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 I didn't manifest it. I wasn't thinking about it. It wasn't even in my radar. I didn't trust women. I went through a divorce and the reason was not, it wasn't my call. I didn't want to. My ex just did some weird stuff. So I was like, whoa, if she can up like that, I'm never gonna get married again. That woman was crazy. I can't trust a woman. So I was like closed off. I was never gonna get married again. This girl just came along my side and just supported me. And that's a bit grace than she could have done. And that won my heart, you know? Wow. Dude, but, that's beautiful. That's a love story right there. But here's the deal, Omar, like the whole, the whole, the whole faith-based thing for me, man, like it's, it's, it's the number one, it's the foundation for me, bro. Like, I honestly believe that when I stopped trying to do things on my, like my own way and I surrendered and started to lock in and really genuinely live by what the word of God says, the Bible, that's what I believe in that, you know, I, my life changed, bro. Like I was given a second chance. You know, I flipped my script of my story. I believe I did it by the grace of God and mercy. I believe I'm alive today by the grace of God and mercy. So everything I do is biblically based. It's faith based. I, I'm not a religious guy, but I do have a strong uh, spiritual life. And I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that's, that's me. I don't force that on anybody, you know, but um, you know, here, here's what I'm saying to say that person, like no matter where you're at in life, don't underestimate the power in who you are created to be, no matter what that means to you. Like, I think the number one thing right now, Omar, I want to get across is like, stop downsizing your most valuable asset. You, there is value in you. Like your story, your gifts, your skills, your knowledge, your experiences. No one has that. I said that earlier, you. Like, what do you want to be known for right now? As you listen to this podcast, maybe you're lacking passion and purpose. What do you want your life to represent? What's the message you want to get to the world? Like, like this is a defining moment, I believe, today on this podcast for you listening. And, and, and like, you're going to start to see value in you again. Like that power that lies within you. Like, you're going to start to understand after listening to this, that you were placed on this earth for a reason. Like whatever you're facing right now, the obstacle, the trial, the storm, you're going to be able to flip it and you're going to give it a new meaning. And you're going to say, wait a second, maybe I have significance again. Maybe I have purpose again. Maybe people need me again. So I think the number one message, Omar, to the person listening is if you don't believe in God, start to believe that, you know what, maybe just I was put here. Maybe I don't believe in that whole God thing just yet, but maybe I'm just going to test it. And that's what I did. God, if you're out there, I'm going to test you. If you're really out there, man, you help me. I'm desperate. I'm down and out. I can't do that. I'm on. Guys, I want you to hear what I'm saying right now, Omar. The greatest part about this entire story, I wish I could jump through this screen and just share this with you, is like, I went on to get full custody of my daughter in a different state. Like, guys, that's, it was a miracle. Like, they changed laws in states. They said, how did that ever happen? So you may be listening today and say, man, I don't believe it's possible. I don't have hope. I can't build a business. Guys, borrow my hope. If you don't have faith, borrow my faith. Mm -hmm. Like you may have forgot who you were born to be. You have made taking yourself for granted. Like that ends today. Like this is about calling. This is about legacy. It's about you building something bigger than just you. There's people on the other side of your story. Like the world needs what you have. Like now is your time to make a decision on this podcast to say, you know what? This is a defining moment that I'm going to start to put myself on a winning team. I'm going to start to believe bigger. I'm going to start to make the right decisions. I'm going to start to create the winning mindset. I like, I can, I will, I must, I was born a winner. I can win. And if you could just start to believe in you again, man, your entire life could change brother. Wow, bro. That's insane, man. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this value. It's, it's, it's so wild to me how well you put that. And I think it's so true, man. It's, like, unless you take control of, of your destiny, unless you really like focus on what it is that you want, emotionally associate, emotionally associate to it, get clear and come from a higher place. It's like things will never shift. And I can relate to that hundred percent, man. So thank you for embodying that. Thank you for being on the show. And thank you for uh, putting that as well as you did. I want to ask um, one last thing. Yeah. What, what do you hope somebody listening to this interview takes away and does with their life? You know, if you could give one piece of advice to somebody who's going to watch this interview, listen to this interview, maybe share it with a friend, re-listen to it a couple times over, hit you up right after this, get in touch with you, find out more about, you know, how to get your playbook, you know, how to work with you, maybe even just how to follow you, see what you share. What's that one piece of advice you would give if you could have a one minute video that could go out to the world right now on how to yeah. make your dreams a reality? Yeah, Omar, I would say, you know, I think it's to, for you to understand that you were placed on this earth for a reason. I want that person right now listening 
to understand that, you know what, I am here on purpose. Uh, I want you to understand that no matter what you're facing, that you are loved, that you are worthy, that you can be passionate and live a passionate life, that you are strong, that you are fearless, that you can make the money you want to make, that you are, are talented, you're resourceful, uh, you're respected, your, your marriage can turn around, your bank account turn, turn, turn around, that the impossible can become possible in your life. The greatest thing I want you to take away from today is that there is nobody like you and that you were uniquely made and you are the MVP and there are people on the other side of your story. The mess you went through, I'm believing right now and I speak life to it, that the greatest mess is it's going to become your message and it's going to reach millions of people and it's going to change lives. That the greatest test you went through is going to become your testimony and it's going to change lives. That the greatest pain that you might be facing at the moment, just like me, you're going to be able to flip it and it's going to become your purpose. And you're going to feel what I feel every single day of passion as you walk out, you're calling your purpose. And the last and final thing I would say is this, is that you were born a winner. So my challenge for you is just start to take small actionable steps every day and believing that you were, that you were born a winner, that you can win and that you will win. And I know that you could turn your entire life around and create the life that you were born to live just like I did. Amen, brother. Amen. Dude, I'm so fired up. I can't wait to re-listen to this one over and over. This is going to be awesome. And uh, where can people find out more about you if they want to get in touch? And what programs are you currently offering that people can uh, learn more about? Yeah, it's awesome. So coachjc.com, man, that's my main website. You can find me there, coachjcblog.com. That's my blog. But again, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media. Um, we run the Win All Day Academy. It's a personal development academy for people that want to win in life. They want to create, you know, a life of passion on purpose um, and win. And then we have the Win All Day uh, Personal Branding Academy, which is winalldaypersonalbrand.com. That's if you are interested in building like uh, and creating a purpose-driven, highly profitable personal brand business. Man, we teach people to do that. It's it's humbling. It's grateful. People are uh, living out their dreams and, and making a great impact. And then we have the Win All Day Strength, which is winalldaystrength.com, which is online workouts to help you look, feel, and perform your best that you can do anywhere, workouts, nutrition, accountability with coaching online as well. So again, we're here to help you win. If we can help you in any way, we'd be blessed to serve you at any capacity. I love it, man. And you guys also have the, the Win All Day Playbook coming out as well, right? Could we take Whoa, a look at that? It's coming out, baby. It's coming out. It's going to be released on go. the store next week. Let's go. Awesome, man. I'm going to mail, I'm gonna mail you one my guy. Absolutely, man. I'm honored to get that. And uh, make sure you guys check out the description below for all the links to all the websites. Follow Coach JC. You can check that out, whether it's fitness, mindset, his personal branding academy. I highly recommend him. And uh, he's not only somebody that I would you know, bring on the show to share a story, but he's also a personal friend we've connected with outside of this. So uh, honor to connect with you, JC. And before we wrap up, we always play a quick little game called First Things First. The way the game works is I'm going to rifle off a quick word or phrase, and then you just tell me the first word or phrase that comes to mind. Does that make sense? Let's go. It's like a quick relation game. So I'll say a word or phrase or concept or something, and you just tell me the first word or phrase. You can do word or phrase that comes to mind. The only rule is that you can't repeat yourself twice. Woo! Cool. You ready? All day, baby. All right. Your past. Purpose. Your daughter. Oh, my love of my life. The biggest limiting belief you had to overcome. Poverty mindset. The secret to making money. The secret to making money is your personal brand, building your personal brand. The best decision you ever made. The best decision I ever made was surrender my life to God and Jesus Christ. The worst advice you've ever been given. Ooh, the worst advice I've ever been <laughs> given is... Oh, man. Take your time. Take your time. Worst <laughs> advice you've ever been given. First one that advice, comes to mind. The, ver the worst advice I've ever been given is probably follow your passion and mm -hmm. money will money will come. Mm -hmm. I teach yeah. people how to build the purpose and the passion and create the money. But do, if you follow your passion, money just doesn't come. It didn't work that way. So I would say right. follow your passion. Money will just come. Yeah. Now, the best advice you've ever been given. Oh, the best advice I've ever been given is build a personal brand 100 <laughs> percent. Uh, what you hope your story does for people when they listen to it what do you what do you hope it unlocks for them at the end of this interview uh gives them purpose inspires them motivates them encourages them um and, and just gives them purpose to know and believe in themselves again your favorite incantation to yourself oh today is my day nothing will get in my way of me being the best 
best version of me. I am here on purpose. I have a purpose. I am strong. I am passionate. I am fearless. I choose faith. I was born a winner. I will win and win all day, baby. That's it. Ooh, thank you, JC, man. That's a wrap. Thank you so much for being on the show, bro. And uh, it's been a privilege, man. It's, that was an awesome game. You did fantastic at that. And the interview was going to really change some lives, man. So thank you so much for hopping on. And uh, excited, man. Excited to see what's to come. Thank you for being on. I'm honored. I'm grateful. Thank you, Omar. Much love. Believe for the best for you, brother. All right, brother. God bless. And again, thank you guys so much for enjoying this episode. Make sure to follow Coach JC and check out all of his programs in the description below. Until next time, live strong, live with passion, and make sure to win all day the Coach JC way. If you guys enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that subscribe button right now because every week we bring you the very best in personal development content, interviews, and insights to help inspire you to take your life and your dreams and make them a reality. And also, if you want to know how to book dream guests the same way I have, you can check the link below for my top three secrets. So if you have a podcast or a show or whatever it is and you want to collaborate with them, if you click that link below, I'll give you those top three secrets to help you get in touch with anybody. And also, don't forget that the Passionate View is available on media platforms as well. So you can subscribe to the podcast. And until next time, thank you for being one of the passionate few.